Uh, let's start uh, <clears throat> presenting ourselves. My name is Marco Dubovski, Duba. Uh, I'm a product coordinator at PagSeguro in Brazil. It's a fintech. Um, Andy, uh, Andresa Chiara, uh, which sometimes in English is difficult to pronounce, thus Andy. <laughs> and I'm an Agile coach at Knowledge21. It's a consulting company for Agile transformation. Okay. We have an initiative uh, called Team of Thought. Uh, it's a nonprofit initiative, and its purpose is to promote uh, mastery learning and innovation through Agile. Yeah, we, we do this in Brazil. Um, we do some meetups and workshops to share knowledge, share about agility, and share about uh, problem solving techniques. Mm -hmm. Go. Oh. You have to change the slide. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, the story starts with a pizza delivery guy. And uh, what happened was we were both reading the Fit for Purpose book, right? And we were thinking that we would like to experiment with it. And he was traveling and I was home alone. And I decided I had had a rough week, so I decided to treat myself to an enormous pizza from my favorite place. <laughs> and when I got downstairs, because in Sao Paulo there's this weird thing, you have to go downstairs to get the food. And it's weird because if I wanted to go outside my house to get the food, probably I wouldn't have asked for them to deliver. Because I'm in my pajamas, right? So. But still, I went downstairs and the pizza guy started asking me questions like, oh, when, when the, the pizza gets here, is it still warm? Does it taste the same as when you eat in the restaurant? And how, how is the, the speed in which we deliver this, the, the pizza to you? How, how much time does it take? Is it, is it enough for you? Is it fast enough for you? And I'm like, this is a pizza delivery guy. What the hell is going on? And I asked him, why are you asking me these questions? And he said, well, because I've been taking suggestions to my boss, and we've changed a few things, and th we managed to increase sales by 10%. And I'm like, this is the pizza delivery guy. <laughs> and I started coaching him. I couldn't help myself. Sorry. Because I'm that person, right? And when I find someone that's uh, interested, I start Okay. But uh, the thing is, what I realized was that this guy, these people, they are, they are very interested in their business uh, and the improvement of it. So when I got home, I ate the pizza and I called him and I said, well, I think I, we found the place. I think we have the place for, for our case, right? And the thing about, uh, when we talk about Kanban and, and practices, we talk a lot about efficiency, correct? We talk about how to improve organizations. And there are a lot of metrics for that. And we can improve the flow, we can uh, reduce lead time, we reduce wait time, and there's a cumulative flow diagram, so we can uh, adjust our bottlenecks. But uh, when we're discussing business, there is one thing that's missing here, which is the world is changing, the businesses are changing, and the needs of our customers are changing all the time. And are we fit to adapt to those changes? Otherwise, if we're not, what are we delivering? Because our purpose here is to deliver value. And a good Kanban practitioner knows we have to talk about business agility. Right? But to talk about business agility, business agility is not trivial. It's not something that's simple. So having something that we can rely on to see, to, to tangibilize this evolution in terms of business is very necessary. And so, as Andy said, um, we can use many metrics to measure and, and follow efficiency, but um, how do we know 
if all the effort we take and doing something is uh, pointing to the right thing to do. One thing is do right something. And another thing, and very important one, is to assure if you're doing the right thing. So um, you, have, uh, you can have, for instance, um, a lot of effort, a lot of metrics, and everything's going OK in delivering this. Mm -hmm. how, how, <laughs> how many of you here knows what it is? OK. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, I'll be there soon. <laughs> uh, how many of you here who knows what it is really like this? Hmm. Oh, nobody. Interesting. So uh, the next question is uh, how many of you find this useful? It's not useful. This is the Microsoft Office feature to help. And certainly, uh, there was a mini metrics to measure if the, 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 the velocity, the, the velocity and, the and the evolution of this of the development. But the final delivery was this. So it was probably doing in the right way, but it's not the right thing. And so it's, not, and it's it, a complex. A solution, right? Because this is the rudimentary, uh, uh, it's, the, it's the, the basics of AI. So I have to understand what your question is and provide an answer and go through a wizard with you. So this is not trivial. This is not simple. Someone took great effort to deliver this. And talking about business agility, it would be very, very interesting, very important for all of us if we had a framework or a way to uh, search for the right thing to do. And, well, that's fit for purpose for. It's a, a framework created by David and by Alexei, and they uh, point and, and focus all the effort to find the right thing to do. It's different to only, uh, and it's full uh, fitted to uh, efficacy. Efficacy. Efficacy, not to, not just to efficiency. Yeah. All so, right. talking about the framework, uh, the fit for purpose shows us three components to every product or service we are working with. So, uh, and these three, these three components must be uh, carried with the attention all the time. We can't neglect any of one, any one of them. We have to pay attention to all the three. And these three components are uh, the design, which means the idea, the, the, the uh, ideation to what your, our product or service, or service will be. The implementation, which means how am I delivering that thing that I designed. And you uh, execute, right? It's about executions, about the how. And service delivery means the experience your product or service can um, impact your client. So it's a, a, so, so three points that you cannot um, let go. So uh, the book brings an excellent example. Uh, yesterday, Dave, in his keynote, talked about Justin Bieber. <laughs> uh, in another way, with another approach. But there's a story that there was this show uh, of Justin Bieber in India, and uh, he has, Justin has a, a, a huge amount of fans in India, that kind of fans that sleep on the line waiting for the day, uh, the show's day. So uh, when we uh, uh, relate the three components of Fit for Purpose to this show, we can think the design is the, the lyrics, the uh, arrangements, and the implementation is, is um, related to the way the, the song is uh, recorded and the arrangements and the crew and the people who will work on the show. And the service delivery was the show itself, the, the way the, the Justin will present himself and offer to the people uh, an experience. So um, the design was okay, 
the implementation was okay in this example, but the service delivery was horrible because Justin Bieber didn't sing by himself. He used a, a playback. So, in for, India. In India, for these people, who which was, was uh, waiting for so long and so so uh, passionately to the Justin Bieber singing to him, see he he was using a playback solution was terrible. And this is an excellent example of the, the three components. When we talk about pizza, which is our case, <laughs> uh, design is the menu. It's the recipe. is how you envision your product, right? And implementation is how you bake the pizza, for instance. Uh, if you have the oven too hot, your pizza will burn, right? And that will be terrible for your product. And for service delivery, we have the experience of eating that pizza. And this, in, uh, this uh, includes, for instance, how much time it takes for the pizza to arrive to the table and how, how cold the drinks are. So the, 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 the customer's experience eating the pizza is the delivery part. When we talk about um, the ways we have to find out what the customers need and uh, their purposes, their methods that the framework gives us to apply. So one of these methods is to use the, the, the fit for purpose cards and the box score. What is that? Usually when we talk about metrics, uh, do you guys know NPS? NPS, Net Promoter Score? Who uses NPS? Great. Um, the thing about NPS, I've been using NPS, so, so, the, so does Marco. Um, and the thing that is a little frustrating about NPS is that it's not that insightful or actionable, right? I'm seeing heads going like this, so yeah. <laughs> um, why isn't it actionable? Because you, you ask someone, how much would you recommend, from, in a scale from 0 to 10, how much would you recommend this product to a friend, right? And this is already better than do you like it, because... When you think of recommending to a friend, you tend to be more um, upfront, more honest about your answer. However, if I say six, what does that mean? Why is this a six and not a 10? And what right? can I do with this information? Exactly. And what I'm going to do next, I know it's a six, but then? <laughs> And the thing about uh, fit for purpose is that we're going to explore the whys. We're going to explore the narratives, okay? We're trying to find the right thing to do. So when we have, thank you. Uh, when we are applying fit for purpose and we're doing the card, what we do is we have three questions, right? The first question is, why did you choose this product? What was your purpose in choosing this product? And this is an open question, so the person can answer like more than one purpose and so on. And the second thing I'm going to ask them is, um, from, from five to zero, right? how much was that, product, that, that purpose fulfilled by the product? So a five is it exceeded all expectations, it's fulfilled and much more. And zero is nothing is fulfilled, I hate you guys, <laughs> basically, right? I'll never come back on something <laughs> like this. I wish you'd burn. <laughs> and, Slowly. And the third question you're going to ask is, okay, then tell me why you answered the second question the way you did. And this is where we get narratives, right? This is where we understand what this person is going through because the same person in different situations might have, will have different purposes. Okay? Yeah, so uh, before it. Mm -hmm. So, oh, it's with me. Uh, we went to the pizza. What did we do? We went to the pizza house. We talked to the owner. 
and we uh, convinced him to apply the fit for purpose framework in order to uh, find the purpose of his client and make some um, implementation, some improvement in his business. So this is the model we use, and this is the actual, actual card. card. We made it, and we, uh, we asked him to uh, deliver this card, this fit for purpose card, next to the bill. So we can, uh, it, 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 um, our, our objective is to, um, the client uh, fulfilled this card after he had his experience. Yeah, because otherwise, uh, if, I, if I hand in the card before, I can't uh, cross-check. Yeah. if the purpose was fulfilled, right? And this is a, a real card. Mm -hmm. So uh, we made this experiment, and then this is the box score, and I will talk to you a little about how to read it. We start from the right to the left, and the, the right part is the quantitative part. Is we had um, delivered 193 cards, and 25 clients answered it. So, and, and then as Andy said, they could uh, put more than one purpose per card. So, these 25 people uh, set a total of 44 purposes. To us, informant, 44 purposes. And at the left side, we have the qualitative analysis, the percentage. So, 91% is in the positive um, approach or the positive feedback. When we sum the scores 405, and 90 percent in this case of the Sojourno, uh, which is the name of the pizza house, uh, we sum the scores three, and uh, negative, it's a neutral uh, position. And the negative position sums the two, one or zero scores. And when we drill the just a second, um, go back one slide. To get this kind of result. These guys are good. Yeah. So it's not by chance that they're a favorite pizza house. <laughs> These guys are good. They're awesome. They're very, very good. So when we drill the, the can you pass here? Mm, sure. Thank you. When we drill, then we open uh, the, the, that total, that 44 purpose informed. Purpose by purpose, we see these results. We can see the, the positive, neutral, and negative columns, and the total of the purpose informant, purpose by purpose. And it's very, very interesting, because it allows us to uh, make a, a, a deep analysis about what leads the clients there. Mm -hmm. And the, the, this is my favorite part of the, the framework. Because one of the things, I coach a lot of product managers, and this is one of the things they struggled with most, which is, OK, I have data. I finally have data. What do I do? Right? What's the strategy? And this helps everybody think strategi strategically. This is a matrix in which you're going to be able to identify what, your, what is your next step? So connecting what we just saw with the matrix, what we see is that, remember we had nothing that was negative, right? So we don't have anything in these quadrants. And this is divided by what purposes I have that are my target and what purposes I have that aren't connected to my target. Okay, so here I have these purposes that the clients were seeking but are neutral. And this means that I have to improve them. So I have to invest to improve the social aspect, the drinks, and the events. One thing that they were spending money on was location. They were, tr they were um, communicating promotions and uh, flyers and so on to neighbors. But when we ask them, well, is, is this what you want? Do you want to be, uh, do you want to connect with the community around the, the, the pizza, pizza house? And they said, well, no, it doesn't make dif any difference for us. Then okay, then why are you spending money on this? 
it's not necessary. So this is something that we can abandon, maybe, right? But we also don't need to overserve. Exactly. And these are the things we have to protect, encourage, and grow. Because these are the things that people are already happy with. However, promotions, we didn't see, uh, there, there isn't a, a specific strategy that says, well, we have to, to have good promotions, we have to be cheap. On the contrary, it's a gourmet experience. So maybe doing promotions, maybe we're over-serving the client. It's of not course, they're, they're not going to complain, yeah. but am I spending the money in the right place? Right? So this is the idea of this. It's and not... Sorry, go on. And one thing that uh, was very, that we were a little shocked was that they have like crazy, very uh, uh, stylish uh, desserts. Like this is uh, a mousse, a chocolate mousse with bacon, right? And they're all like that. It's like a souffle and so on. They had a, an alien tiramisu. Yeah, and nobody mentioned the desserts. The desserts we like, was not purpose for no one huh. who rode the car. And we were like, huh. And we started asking, like, how much do you spend on these desserts? And are you having waste and so on, right? Because we were very intrigued. So. Uh, when we, um, now that we know the purposes of our, of the, the Sojourners clients, uh, we can, and we have an, an open, now we, we have the no purpose by purpose, what that, what make, make the people go there. So it's very, very important to can segment this this group of purpose, of purposes into some kind of of um, similarity, which uh, allows us to apply that business strategy matrix that Andy said, and make and, and uh, allow the the business owner to make adjustments in his strategy, and effectively uh, create some kind of uh, approaches that make the business uh, better and fit for the people who go there. Mm -hmm. And to help them with that, we created personas, right? We basically identified that there were two clusters, like everybody wanted good food, so this was okay. We knew that this was a, a very important purpose, but given that, we had two very different type of purposes settings. We have, we have the people who like uh, the idea that I get there and it's an, a cozy environment and the waiter knows my name and knows what kind of pizza I like. They know the, the kind of olive oil we like. <laughs> so, and it's true story. They, they true story. really know. True story. And when, when we get there, it's usually, oh, Marco, uh, we have a suggestion for you. We, ju we just got this new, new flavor, blah, blah, blah. And Andy, for you, Rosmarino? And I go like, yeah. And Coke Zero and... Yeah, yeah. so they, they know ice. us. And this is not just us, it's everybody that go there, right? So you have this type of person, the person that, that goes there for the, the environment, for the service, the service. for uh, the, the cozy atmosphere, and to enjoy good food. And you have this other persona, the one that's going there to celebrate something, to hang out with their friends, to listen to good music, right? So we created two personas to help them with this. Sorry, that came from the narratives on the cards? Yes. Actually, it came from the narratives, but also from the grouping of the purposes, right? Because just the narratives won't help you this get drew. there and group them. This drew. Yeah. Goes to this grouping. That are the same ones as this below. Personas. See, so you can you can clearly see there are two different types of behavior. So uh, we have Sandra and Paulo. Sandra is basically my type of girl, <laughs> and Paulo is not my type of person. <laughs> but still, Paulo exists. Paulo goes there. And I'm both at the same time. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you like talking yeah. to people, but not that much. Um, so this is where we really got them to try and identify the two personas with their customers, right? Try to talk to them and identify so they could serve them better. And at this point, at this point, we already know what makes people go to the Sojourner. So, um, and knowing this, it it, it makes our life easier in order to find the right fitness criteria for what we have to adapt or maintain or improve in the in the business strategy to match the criteria because Paulo and Sandra doesn't uh, necessarily have the same criteria to go there for instance we have the the framework presents us with a lot of um, fitness criteria some kind of, of uh, time oriented and for instance we can um, use to Paulo which more interested in share with friends and celebrate and, and, and socialize. Um, the duration is something very, very important for him. If the, the service will um, hush him to pay the bill and to, to stay a little longer or, or to uh, free some, some space to another client, he will be very, very uh, annoyed about it. Uh, however, oh, otherwise, uh, for Sandra, the timeliness is very, very important. Let's let's imagine, for instance, Sandra is uh, will will have an appointment one hour after he she uh, went to the the pizzeria, and she is waiting for a friend, and her friend told her that she will, 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 uh, will arrive in 20 minutes, and she knows that uh, pizza will be delivered after order it in 10 minutes. So one uh, fitness criteria in this case, which applies, uh, it's a very, uh, a very perfect fit to Sandra is... Um, knowing exactly. Know exactly, it's, it's punctuality, it's predictability. Because if she order, at the moment the, her friend told her that she will uh, she will need to, 20 minutes to, to come. And she ordered pizza, and 10 minutes later, the pizza will be delivered. That will be probably less warm when the friend really arrives. Mm -hmm. So uh, another, another, <laughs> another, another <laughs> aspect, another fitness criteria that is relevant for Sandra is uh, timeliness. She will have an appointment one hour later, and if the uh, any part of the the service delivery will make she uh, stay at the pizzeria after the time she needs, it will certainly not good for her. And when we talk about quality, it's another uh, aspect of the fitness criteria the framework uh, the framework provides us. We can uh, apply the functional and non-functional quality to both, but. Sandra probably, in this case, will be oriented to the two aspects of quality, both functional and non-functional quality. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, Sandra, Sandra will probably care a lot more about the pizza quality yeah. than Paulo, because Paulo just wants to hang out and have like talk talk to his friends, right? If Paulo order a, a pepperoni pizza and uh, the pizza house uh, brings him a margarita, it's not be a problem at all. But for Sandra, it will be a, a, a catastrophe. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last aspect of the framework is the conformity, the safety conformity. And for both, probably it's important to the ingredients and the, the, the way of preparing is fit to the, the health uh, regulations. regulations. Mm -hmm. And the final product will be very, very... Um, fit with this criteria. We, uh, in, in this moment, we want to talk about a, another case, not in the pizza universe. Mm -hmm. This is a Nubank, it's a fintech from Brazil. Nubank was, uh, a company was aimed to be fit for purpose. They uh, 
choose to attend specifically to a few fitness criteria, not at all, not all the types at the same time. They uh, saw with the Brazilian market, Brazilian uh, financial services market, that the credit cards are very, very confused and very difficult to manage. And then they created a card, this card, which is very, very simple to use. And, and uh, this card empowers the client to manage all the cycle of credit. And this is a, a, a huge difference about the other, uh, compared to the other uh, credit cards offered by the banks, the, the huge banks in Brazil. And this strategy was so, so successful that the bank was elected the best bank from in, in Brazil. And, and we're, talking a, about, we're talking about a, a bank that has like 5 million customers against 60 million, like in Itaú, for instance. So uh, for them to overpass a bank like Itaú, it's quite a feat. And doing like three features in their card. First, first iteration, three features, discovery. They did a lot of testing, a lot of iteration because they knew that they were discovering. They were uh, testing if their product was fit for purpose. And this is something we all should learn from, right? Because when we talk about like the other, the other um, speakers showed like great advancements in their companies. But one thing that uh, I think sometimes we, we, we miss is that how, how do we deal with, fa with failure, with invalidating our, our hypothesis, right? How, we how do we discover things? And this is something this framework helps a lot with. So how do you measure success? How do you measure that you're in the right path to build the right thing? And how can we turn this thing that you measured in actions, in real actions to the business strategy? So back to the sojourn. So back to the pizza. <laughs> uh, when we discussed with them after the results, uh, we decided to, to take a look on the four types of metrics we could uh, assess. So the first is, is your business fit for purpose? Do you, do you uh, attend to the fitness criteria your, your customer needs? And we had the results of the Fit for Purpose box score to help us with that. Uh, but when we went to health indicators, they did measure things like lead time. However, they were not paying attention to waste in, for instance, with the dessert, right? They had a lot of waste. They were spending a lot of money trying to keep the desserts in their menu. And the desserts weren't even mentioned as a purpose, right? Uh, they had no improvement drivers. So sometimes you can improve something and then it becomes a health metric, right? But they didn't have that. They didn't know what they wanted to improve. But they did have a lot of metrics that were vanity metrics. Like for instance, how many likes do I get on Instagram? And funny thing, usually the desserts had a lot of likes. So they used this, and they were very passionate about their solution. They loved the idea of the, of the desserts. So we were saying, let's try and experiment with something new. And they were like, no, our they desserts are perfect. Yeah. Huh? They struggled a lot. Yeah. And what we did was, in Brazil, I don't know about other countries, but in Brazil, uh, when you go to a pizza place and you think about dessert, you usually think about two things that are very basic, which is, which are uh, a chocolate pizza and a banana pizza with cinnamon on it, okay? And what we, see, see, the Brazilians are all <laughs> going like, yeah. <laughs> so what we asked them if they were willing to do is, are you willing to try an experiment? Because this is something that we should really validate. Either we're going to pivot this or you shouldn't be doing desserts because it's not on your purposes, right? So you're over-serving and this has nothing to do with what your client needs. So 
we can try, we can experiment, and if it goes awry, okay, we'll drop it. If it, if it does well, then or we, we found a niche. we can have an opportunity here. Exactly. So uh, we asked them to, for a week, just a week, to try and experiment with those two flavors. And we asked them, is, is the effort for this big? No, no, but we don't want to taint the, the, the name of the, the restaurant. And we were like, it's just an experiment. If you don't like it, it's OK. Just trash it. And they tried it. And in that first week, the dessert sales went 10% up. And they were like, hmm. And this is their menu today. You see, there is a whole size of sweet pizzas that never existed before this experience. And At first, they had eight different desserts. Mm -hmm. That none, none were pizza. Yeah, yeah right? none, the, this left side didn't exist. They're still attached to the tiramisu, though. <laughs> so this, this side is the pure attachment to solution, and this side is what actually is selling, right? And I want you guys to guess how much did the sales increase? Almost, 60. 60% 60 increase in sales for desserts and waste to basically nothing. So we had a drop in waste, we had an excellent increase in sales, and now they just, uh, they, they, the options are more classy. So, um, my favorite is Portofino. It's brie cheese, lint white chocolate, uh, red Jelly. berries uh, jam, yeah. and vanilla ice cream. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> it's very good. So now when I go there, I always order rosmarino, which is my favorite pizza, and now a sweet pizza for dessert. So the thing here is that, uh, this is a quote, quote by, by Senge. Um, he says that the committed person doesn't play by the, the, the rules of the game. They are responsible for the game. So if something happens and they see that the rules are preventing them to achieve a vision, they change the rules. Do you remember, guys, the pizza delivery guy? He was trying to change the rules. He was trying rules. to change the rules. And so were we. So if your business has rules, but this is preventing you from reaching a vision, well, Fit for Purpose is a great way to start changing them. And the idea here is that purpose paves the way to vision. If, purpose, if the purpose is not clear, both for your company and your view on the, your client's purposes, it's hard to reach the vision. That's it. OK, thank you. So questions, do we have time for questions? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. <coughs> OK, so speaking of purpose, was the purpose of this to basically prove out that you can use this in anywhere, regardless of whether software yes. or anything else? Yeah. yeah, because it would have been fairly easy to do this in our work. Because we wouldn't have to convince, really convince anyone that doesn't know us. Have, have, because we have a, a relationship of confidence established in both our works. So if we say, let's try something, usually people will go like, OK, let's try it. And we wanted it to be hard. We wanted it to we wanted it we wanted to be able to sell because of the value of the of the framework, and to do that we had to get out of our comfort zone. Yeah, right? very cool. So that thus pizza. <laughs> Nobody else. What I'm curious about is if you got. Uh, Plenty pizza for our life after improving the pizza business. We should, right? <laughs> Eating for sure. We should. We should. Every time we go there, Marco, the the waiter, he hugs us. <laughs> so hugs. Okay. Hugs for life. Good, Good one. Thank you. Awesome. I consider him my friend. 
Mm. You consider everybody a friend. <laughs> but he's a, he, he brings me food. So. Okay. okay. So there's a it's reason. It's a very dear one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Totally should, right? Hmm. No questions. Because this is not, it's not that it's, it's, it's difficult yeah. to, to apply, but it's.